Hello, and welcome to a late night episode of Stable Discussion uh, with your hosts, Abdullah Ali and Ben Hoffer. Yeah, we're, uh, we're coming at you at 11, 10 p.m. Uh, <laughs> so uh, if we're tired and sleepy looking, please bear with us. We're Great. trying our best. <laughs> Yeah, if we, uh, you know, if we put you to sleep, uh, maybe this is a late night for you as well. Oh, great. Um, yeah. All, all the better. <laughs> AI, AI SMR. There you go. We'll, we'll, uh, it'll be a second channel. <laughs> Fat and bedding. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> cool. Well, um, we left it to the humans this week. Um, no, uh, fancy AI outline, unfortunately. Um, but, you know, we've had a, a, a difficult, well, not a difficult couple of weeks. We've just been, we've just been busy. Um, both of us were out of town. I was in New York one week. You were in Salt Lake one week. Um, and you were sick. Back. You're in, in California. California this week. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, bit of travel. Um, yeah. and then, um, we've also been doing some meetup stuff. Um, as well. Mm -hmm. There's a, a local meetup in town. Um, hosted by a friend of the show Dan Waldy. Uh, it's called AI Innovators and Devs Meetup. Um, and uh, we've been attending that for the last about three weeks. Um, and it's, uh, becoming sort of a monthly meetup, uh, that we've been going to, um, I'll link in the show notes. So over to the meetup site, if you're interested in, in checking it out. Um, but the last event was sponsored by, uh, Elevate, um, and they've been kind of hosting us, um, through most of these events. Um, and it's just been, it's been pretty great. They, uh, actually are the ones who hosted open AI when they came to Toronto, uh, originally, uh, way back when. So yeah, um, Sam in the fireside chat, right? Yep, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so they're definitely interested in continuing to be part of the uh, AI uh, conversation in Toronto. Um, and, and we're definitely uh, enjoying getting a chance to actually talk to people there. Can we jump right into it then? Can we jump right into um, talking about what your thoughts are about this event? Like, I have, I have questions for you. Sure. Um, and I want to tell you your insight. Like, mm -hmm. so for some more background, you know, um, Ben said we've kind of been there for a few weeks. The first week we went, um, I just kind of luckily got like inside this is happening and me and him went and there was maybe another 10 people including Dan there um <laughs> and it was just like a little side room um just like chatting uh, and uh it was great it was very much just a bunch of nerds who were like really passionate and excited about AI um <laughs> one person like left his like consulting role or like a job at KPMG I think it was um, <laughs> um other people were just like straight out of school like a high schooler who was like trying to get into AI stuff variety and range of different things that were, were, were like um happening there and just everyone's just excited it was a really mm -hmm. interesting vibe and that was the first week the second week i missed that was that's when it was on salt lake mm -hmm. um second week actually they had a presentation come in um jake uh, one of the members of the the team came in with his uh, uh co-creator chloe um and they presented about their um ai interview tool um and they kind of gave a, a first presentation um, presentations are kind of like part of the, the event. So they'll kind of have some marketing uh, or sorry, uh, networking beforehand. Mm -hmm. Then they'll do like a presentation of somebody who's kind of just working on something. It's not usually like a product pitch per se, but it's just sort of like people try and stuff out. Yeah. Um, a lot of, I think what Dan was telling me was that he really liked the idea of this being a place where like people who are, let's call them makers kind mm -hmm. of come together and just talk about the thing they're making, um, mm -hmm. you know, that, that like ability to sort of have your peers who are often in the same positions as you are, running the same things as you are, in the same challenges as you are, go over your work and talk to you about it and ask you questions to help you solidify and move past roadblocks and, and all those wonderful things, um, <laughs> which makes perfect sense. I mean, you know, this is very nascent, this, this whole industry and technology, and kind <laughs> of we're making new tools every day. We're figuring things out. We're figuring out what works and this will work. We're figuring out like patterns um, <laughs> and sharing that amongst each other is a big part of our opportunity to kind of grow quicker. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. And it's also nice. Like I, I work with a ton of different people who've been in development, uh, but I would say a handful are interested in actually thinking about AI right now. Mm -hmm. Um, and even fewer have actually tried stuff. Um, and so it's actually nice to be surrounded by people who've actually are trying and are actively interested in like contributing and, and building stuff. Um, because we think right now, I mean, this is the summer of architecture. Uh, <laughs> it is the summer yeah. of like, figuring it out, defining like what it means to be an AI developer. Um, and so, yeah. And it's so exciting learning all the patterns and figuring out new ways that, um, we can explore and look at how AI can integrate into the applications that we use. Like mm -hmm. the, the interviews of the chat 
for example, is something that we've kind of had in some ways for a bit. Um, mm -hmm. But now we have this very, very, very capable and available ability that we have to literally talk to something that sounds almost human, but mm -hmm. also now increasingly have it be able to buy our actions for us and do things mm -hmm. for us. What mm -hmm. does that mean for how we interact with things? It's not always just chat. We don't always have to deal with like literally ch talking to it to buy an action for us. It can be more intelligent, it can be more reactive, it can be more dynamic, it can be more programmatically aligned with an event that's coming in from another endpoint or an API or a grok or who knows what. There's so many opportunities for how we can make this stuff work. And we have not tried anything yet. Like, <laughs> like we tried some of them, me and you together. Yeah. There's so many things we haven't tried yet. It takes mm -hmm. years and years and years of engineer architectural effort to build mm -hmm. patterns, to build libraries, to build ideologies, yeah. best practices. Think about it a lot like the first time you had like a, a touchscreen phone. I remember the first time I had it. Like, like people had built apps, but the apps were basically like presenting data largely. Yeah. I think like the Notes app um, was, was kind of something that was pretty cool. There's Calendar. Calculator. Uh, that was a big app they gave you right away. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Calculator. I think uh, Angry Birds was really cool. I remember like the first time playing Angry Birds where you could kind of like drag elements across the screen yeah. and it was like, there was this sort of sponginess or, or uh, stretchiness. Elasticity, um, yeah. Elasticity, it, it felt sort of feeling good. And you're like, oh, yeah. I'm doing that. Like, and you know, you could do that with a control, you could do that with a mouse, but it felt different when you touched it. Yeah, um, and the, they added the vibration too when you like, when you dragged it a bit to give you mm -hmm. this like feedback and it's all subtle, mm -hmm. all really mild. But the mm -hmm. amalgamation of all those subtle understandings of how to improve the user interaction of you moving mm -hmm. that 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 finger across the screen, we saw that happen. We saw that evolve. Mm -hmm. From all those of us old enough, those of us who were like, you know, 25 years or older, we will remember mm -hmm. that process. We'll be like, oh yeah. I mean, the first ones were like just tapping like so, and some moving around a little. Mm -hmm. But now we have like multi-finger type support and rotating mm -hmm. gestures that we all totally know how to refresh mm -hmm. by holding down, how to scroll quickly. You know, the flick mm -hmm. scroll, for example. Um, mm -hmm. All these things are didn't come out of nowhere. They came from yep. much pain, much experience, much um, mm -hmm. you know trial and error. And we're like yep. at the very beginning of that process for AI mm -hmm. that will continue to change very rapidly, quickly, as we mm -hmm. see with things like, which we'll get to. I will play this mm -hmm. episode, the code interpreter, um, mm -hmm. and as we see when we get to things like the function calling system, which we won't talk about today, but maybe some other time, mm -hmm. to help make um, your models uh, able to communicate better with like traditional APIs. Um, mm -hmm. We see this thing, this stuff is happening all the time and down the mm -hmm. pipe, we see more. So, yep. you know, this, this constant battle, of, like trying to um, wrap your head around what's currently happening and make patterns mm -hmm. around that. And then hopefully um, those are still relevant in six months. Yeah. And, and that's why it's great to talk to people. I mean, that's, that's, that's part of our purpose of going is, is also to sort of test our ideas out and see, hey, does this actually make sense to other people? Mm -hmm. Are other people seeing the same things that we're seeing? When we say something, does it resonate? Um, and, and you know, we're kind of doing our own work as well. And the other thing that we have that's pretty cool to announce is that we are uh, now a civil discussion. It used to be substack dot or civil discussion dot substack dot com. We're now just stable discussion dot com, full domain. Full domain. Uh, and if you go there, we've been publishing a uh, set of AI UI UX examples um, that are sort of some of our ideas about thinking through what is possible now in user interfaces using AI. Um, and so there's some, there's some interesting examples on there. Um, I think the one I talk about a lot um, is uh, autocomplete. Uh, that's one that sort of everyone already knows. Google has that. Um, a yeah. lot of these tools do. Um, but the example I have is sort of uh, having autocomplete in um, an e-commerce uh, flow where you're leaving a review for a product that you know. Um, how cool would it be for you to like be able to have something given to you as a good review, you know, that you'd be happy to have, have given? Um, as you sort of like start typing, you kind of start typing a little bit of it. Um, it also helps the potential like market owner be able to get a better review into their system. Um, and so you can kind of go on, uh, explore that. Um, as long as you've got an open AI key, we've got it kind of locked for that right now. We're waiting to get, uh, hopefully we'll get a grant from OpenAI uh, to be able to uh, open that up for everybody. Um, yeah, that'll be but, a lot of fun. Um, yeah, I hope we do so. too. But like, yeah, I think, I think it'd be great to get feedback and, and your thoughts mm -hmm. and feelings. Because like, like we mm -hmm. said, this is literally the point at which we are dragging our fingers around on the screen the first time and seeing the little lines for like Fruit Ninja. You know, we're mm -hmm. like, is that a useful feature, the useful gesture, or is it just fruit cutting? We don't know. We have no idea. <laughs> so 
Yeah. Yeah. Please give us feedback so we have a better idea of like, you know, kind of how to, how to continue to involve, I'm um, sorry, evolve uh, these, these, I don't know, gestures, let's call them. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Um, um, okay. So let's, let's yeah. back to the question about this event. So second event was like <laughs> 40 people, right? Went from 10 to 40 or so. Yep. Yep. Exactly. Um, and I, I would say that that event was a lot more diverse. Uh, the first event was a lot more focused on, I would say, builders. Uh, the second event started having a lot of people that were kind of more generally interested in just AI and like what it is and like what it would what it would be like. Um, and, but yeah, the presentation was still very focused. Um, and then uh, the final event was this this most recent one uh, got up, I think, over a hundred people uh, in attendance. Um, and that one had a very wide range of different people from um, all over Toronto. Um, I remember there was a hand raise at one point, just seeing who had actually uh, kind of gone as far as the presenter, uh, Dan, who, who kind of presented his app. Um, and it was about 10 people in the room. Uh, so about, uh, so. Uh, yeah. out of 100. So about 10% of, of, of the attendees had like kind of built something um, fully uh, with it. Yeah, a lot of people there at that third one were people, there was a good amount of people who were just essentially um, either completely brand new to the world and just curious and were like, mm -hmm. what's going, what's out there? Completely mm -hmm. respectable. And I mean, everyone there was respectable. Every, every desire to go and involve yourself in these like meetups and groups, I think is important and, and, and it's healthy for everybody. It doesn't matter if you have a product or you're just, you're just curious to come in to talk. It's good for both the person who's exploring and, and the people who already, you know, been there for a while to get that perspective and that communication there. Um, mm -hmm. Regardless, you know, there was a, a large portion who were like that and a large portion of people who were maybe a little bit of interest or insight, but they were just looking for other people who had experience and had knowledge. Mm -hmm. um, so to some degree, it's kind of gives me this impression that um, if you are somebody who was a developer or a maker of some kind and you learn how to use these tools and abilities, you learn how to incorporate mm -hmm. them into your specialty, I'm sure it's something that you're really good at. Maybe you're really good at like financial workings. And maybe I'll share something um, later to kind of highlight that um, mm -hmm. data analysis. How do you use these tools to mm -hmm. enhance your ability to, to deliver, um, mm -hmm. you know, usefulness or to integrate into other products or to just create new paradigms altogether? If you mm -hmm. can kind of get into that flow, there's opportunities abound, it feels like. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, another plug, uh, if you go to the bottom of stablediscussion.com, there is a how to be an AI developer, uh, how to get started sort of thing down there. And you can kind of find some uh, interesting stuff. So if that does sound like you, and you are interested in actually figuring stuff out, you can go find some, some valuable information there. Uh, and like we were there, there's a ton of people who want to build stuff. They're excited about building stuff. They just don't really know how. Um, and so even if, you know, if you sound, if you think that you're a builder and you want to, you know, try and find somebody who wants to work with you, who has an interesting idea, maybe you're not the idea person. You're sort of, I'd love to build something though. And I want some, some cool ideas of what to build. A ton of people there that are also interested. So um, absolutely, pretty exciting. Yeah. Um, let's go through uh, the rest of the outline. Yeah. Um, I know we're, uh, you know, 15 minutes in, but might as well go through. Uh, so we're just going to do a couple news updates uh, about the uh, new OpenAI changes. Uh, talk a little bit about uh, Google DeepMind and super intelligence um, and sort of like what that might mean um, in the in the grander scheme and how to sort of be involved in some of those discussions and what people are talking about. Uh, Midjourney also had 5.2 drop while we've been away, uh, and um, that adds some new cool capabilities. So we'll talk a little bit about that and I'll show some tricks about um, how I use Midjourney um, to be able to kind of keep some prompts available um, and how I kind of track some stuff there. Um, and then uh, we've both been playing around with a new app uh, called Pi uh, that is pretty awesome. Uh, we're <laughs> <Yeah>. both <laughs> really blown away, I think, by... Everybody has uh, shown is like, they like, they just kind of just like freeze and just make the noise like for like a minute or two. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I haven't kept the lie down. Absolutely. Yeah. I think there's something about the, the chat interface that just feels out there compared to everything else. It's a great, it, the reason I talk about it isn't just because it's cool, but because mm -hmm. it's a great example of how UX significantly changes. It's not like a dramatic UX change, mm -hmm. but just subtle UX changes significantly mm -hmm. change experience. I don't want to talk about that mm -hmm. more than anything else. Absolutely. Awesome. Um, and then uh, if we get to it, um, we're trying to keep the session uh, this time down to a little under 40 if we can. Uh, there is also a great article about the uh, rise of the AI engineer and sort of um, how this new role is evolved. Um, but we may save that as a, a juicy tidbit for next time. So yeah. 
Well, let's, um, get, right, let's get right into yeah, it. Yeah, let's do it. What do, you, what do you want to tackle first? Um, the live code interpreter kind of demo on a trial? Yeah, okay, let's do cool. it. I, you, you've mentioned it a couple times already, so I can tell you're yeah. excited. <laughs> I should be fun. I'm really, I'm yeah. really hoping it works. <laughs> yeah, this is a live demo. They are yeah. not known to go re well the first time. Oh, they uh, never go well for me. Let's see. What <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. So here's what we did. So we're like, let's go to um, our world in data and just find some data set that seems somewhat interesting. And we found one that was, um, let me just show the tab real quick. Um, this tab over here, it was like, artificial intelligence has advanced despite having few resources dedicated to its development. New, sorry, now investments have increased substantially. Very interesting. Lots of data that talks about it, charts and graphs and all that stuff. What's great about this app with this our world and data um website is that they also have like downloadable data. You can just go in here and just download the actual CSVs if you want to. Very useful. And we're just like, okay, there's so many tables here. What do we just use? This one looks like it was a fun one. It's the annual number of new computer science PhDs in the United States by specialty. Uh you can see some interesting pages here. As you can see, in 2016, there was a significant jump. Um, and it has really kind of risen since. Um mm -hmm. 2020 is already too old. I mean, like this is, this, that's two and a half years ago. Um, mm -hmm. And I think especially considering ChatGPT came out 20, like six months ago. Um, mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, the transformer in GPT-3 and those models are roughly around 2021. I feel like mm -hmm. you could probably see a nice upwards trend here. Regardless, it's data. Um, it and the goal here, just to try it out with a random example, um, using the new ChatGPT interpreter. For those who don't know, uh, you now have the ability to uh, use uh, a new subset of GPT-4, I used to pay for this, uh, unfortunately not free, um, that allows you to use and they call it code interpreter inside of um, the chat interface. And the code interpreter, what's special about this is that it is, um, well, some people, some people are even kind of wondering if it's a slightly better version of GPT-4. I don't know that, but then about that, I have no insight in that regard, um, however, um, what I do know is that it has the ability to essentially evaluate code it runs. So it Python specifically, it'll just give it some information, some data. You would say, do this thing for me. It'll write a Python app or a script. It'll run that code um, and then evaluate whether that works. And it has a bit more of these tools and these techniques we've seen in papers for a while, where it's got like um, it's kind of like self-critiquing. It has some, um, you know, like there's all these fancy terms for, the, for these processes, but are basically all, are all about iteratively calling the, the, the model on its own mm -hmm. bots outputs and like, and like, you know, improving the, the result. Mm -hmm. uh, there's some really cool things that are coming out in that regard. I think we talked about one of them recently, the, the tree of, the tree of, um, mm. whatever. Tree of thought. Yeah, we thought about the topic last mm -hmm. time. Increasingly, I'm, I'm pretty confident that Google is going to integrate this into their next generation models. Just from all mm -hmm. the hints I've been hearing here and there. Mm -hmm. I'll talk about that a bit in their next, sorry, not in next piece, but long story short, this is what's good with the code interpreter. And if mm -hmm. you go on the internet, you see people using this stuff, they, you see some really amazing things. You see people mm -hmm. passing in like all this data and saying, hey, write me a report, write me a financial um, write-up about this. What, what do you think is a good kind of report for this data? And then you show me those, those values. Show me some graphs that I wouldn't normally see for um, the time data. Like all kinds of things like that, and it'll just mm -hmm. do it for you. Um, mm -hmm. So let's try. Let's do it. I'm going to just attach it first. Here we go. I don't know. I don't know what to what to do with this. So I'm gonna mm -hmm. I'm gonna be like dealer's choice. I mm -hmm. have attached some data that highlights the amount of new PhDs in comp sci in the U.S. over the last few years up until 2020. Um, I don't know how to um, look at this data in interesting ways. Could you provide some creative and interesting ways to one, visually observe this data graphs. Interesting interesting and um, I don't know clever pictographs <laughs> say to uh, analyze this data 
That's good. That's yeah, it. I like it. Cool. Let's see what happens. Yeah. So you just one. Th- sorry. Sorry. Go ahead. I said you can also when I did series, I uploaded this this value. Well, a big part of this is that you can upload content, images as well too. So people take two pictures and say, make a gap a gift that converts from this image to that image. Ooh, wow. Does it work? Uh, it works. How well does that work? Yeah. People. Oh, yeah, wow. people yeah. Yeah. Dang, that's insane. Interesting. I mean, I guess yeah. If you're using just Python, then I guess you can do some sort of like merge library or something. Yeah. Yeah, and it, it knows will. what libraries it can use as well. You just yeah. tell it; it'll just like figure out the right library. Yeah, interesting. Okay, so it looks like it is taking the data. It's in, it's figuring out like what columns exist within the data set. I read it, um, and then uh, it's now looking at some visualization ideas, um, some anal- analysis ideas. Cool. Please do. It says let's start, but it kind of just stops. Okay. I'm like, yeah. Do the thing. Got it. it. It is interesting, like this idea of like the the re loop um, that that we are seeing in in stuff like this, where it sort of thinks and then it reevaluates. That is sort of similar to like how we think. If you really break it down, yeah. if you were to always follow the first thought that comes through your head, you would be very impulsive as a person, and you may. You may do things that you'd regret, you know, like say something really mean to somebody or like, you know, uh, yeah. you know, you may, uh, uh, I don't know, upset, uh, upset your friend, your, 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 uh, spouse. Uh, so definitely, definitely something, uh, that, that AI has to kind of learn from us as well. Yeah, absolutely. And, and when you think about it, it's really hard to even kind of understand how we do it. Like mm-hmm. I would take for granted how we self critique and how we like iterate over our own internal processes and how we stop mm-hmm. it and like rewind and move forward and go down different paths. Mm-hmm. All of this is very probably different from person to person. And mm-hmm. number two, um, very um, amorphous. It's not like a clear <laughs> labeled structure that we have in our heads that we're using here. It's just literally thinking. Um, right. Trying to find a way to turn that thinking process into something that can be communicated to a model in, <laughs> uh, in this way is quite um, interesting. It's been very fruitful in a lot of ways. Like the simplest basic example was just telling you to think step by step. The simplest mm-hmm. one that, that, just, mm-hmm. that has done amazing already. Uh, and mm-hmm. now it's literally iterative calls on itself and self critiquing and, and all these cool things. Mm-hmm. Anyway, let's see. Yeah, let's take a look at the data. Uh, what kind of new PhDs in each specialty over the years? Uh, mm-hmm. As you can see, um, can, you very, uh, can I? I don't know if I can. Let's, I'll just do the old fashioned way. Uh, yeah. There we go. A little rough, but no big deal. Yeah. Not very interesting um, over yeah. here. This they is somewhat of, interesting. Yeah. It stacked it, I guess. Is, is, yeah. Does that stack up to the, be the total then, I'm assuming? Like some total? I assume so, yeah. Because it starts like 2,250. Yeah, this, this, this is yeah. the total over here. Oh, I guess this total is compared against this over here. So this is like a duplicate, I guess. I assume as much at least. I can't tell exactly. I don't yeah, know how it's this data. <laughs> I don't know. Interesting. Yeah, interesting. Okay. And they have bar graphs. Are right. yeah, so those are great <laughs> basic visualizations, I guess. They are. Yeah. And um and then it says, okay, well mm-hmm. okay. Also trends. I mean, this is fine. This is a fun breakdown. It's not as nice yeah. as like the the cool things I've seen. I've seen some really interesting stuff. Let me try mm-hmm. one more. Let me try one more. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm gonna download um this one. Um I'll just share my screen. This one is like um, countries. Mm, mm-hmm. uh, there's still there's not a lot of data though. Um, mm-hmm. Let's let's you know what let's just get out of here and find something random. I told you I was looking for something that, that wasn't like controversial and like full <laughs> of issues, but I might not follow through. I'll just get something <laughs> that seems like it might have a lot of data and just go with it. Uh, uh, poverty and economic development. Let's see, healthcare spending. See, any of you have? Oh, there's a lot of data on this one. Tons of yeah, data. Public healthcare expenditures. Let's try mm-hmm. you out. Mm-hmm. Download. Full data set. Cool. Mm-hmm. Same thing. I'm going to make a new chat here. Yep. 
You need to share again, I think. Oh, cool. Share this tab instead. Help us finish shares. Mm -hmm. And I'll just say something similar. I'll say, um, I have patched public help expanded share share of GDP. It provide me a really high quality analysis with lots of high quality visualizations. We'll see how that does. Can you show me the data again? Uh, is there an easy way to show that? <laughs> yeah, let me just go back to, while well, I'm seeing this, let's go, I'll just go back here. Okay. Here, share this tab. Okay. Uh, table. I'm wondering, ah, uh, I wonder, okay, so I guess one question maybe that I have is like, would it know the relative like size of these different countries? Or something like that, like something that wouldn't be in the, I mean, the health it, data. Maybe if it gave it another table. Um, give it another that, table. But yeah. Mm -hmm. I guess, yeah, probably trying to pull what it already knows about countries. It won't be as accurate. Categorize as the countries. Data. Yeah. yeah it would I, be could, I could ask it to. I can, I can yeah. try. Say, yeah. yes, we'll see. Okay, mm -hmm. Let's go back and, and see what it says. Let's... We could do something of like, yeah, filter, like do a filter that's maybe creative or something like that. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's interesting though. What is that graph? Let's see. Oh, it's percentage of GDP. Oh, it's GDP this, and this, this is a, yeah, this is distribution, oh, okay. basically mm -hmm. percentage. So this is this is very useful. We're seeing a mm -hmm. very strong trend in which mm -hmm. people generally countries are between, you know, let's say three point five or three point something. And like six percent of their GP as uh, healthcare said it. Mm -hmm. Great. This is Scrum shows mm -hmm. the distribution of public healthcare funding as a percentage of GDP is approximately in a model, but slightly skewed to the right. Most countries tend to spend between three to six percent of the GDP on public health. There are some mm -hmm. countries that spend as little as zero and, and as much as no sixty percent of GDP. Whew. Um cool. Next is it's also a bell it's also a bell graph, so very normal <laughs> distribution of, of anything. Everything is belt. Yep, everything is. Yeah. Um, uh, next, let's look at how public health expenditures as a percentage of GDP have evolved over time. We'll plot the mm -hmm. global average for each year to get an overall picture. Great. Mm -hmm. This is over overall time. Um, more and more percentage of the GDP. Great. Mm -hmm. um, oh, this is interesting. Um, mm -hmm. This is a box plot. Shows you. Essentially, uh, because it's a because it's a distribution, yeah. you can probably do an easy yeah you can do an easy box plot of, of that. Awesome, cool. very cool. And like top up countries, oh. the highest average expenditure from two thousand onwards. Mm -hmm. Very yeah. useful stuff. Yeah, awesome. Uh, great analysis. Let's ask now. Could mm -hmm. you you display the countries? on a map graph with color coded expenditures. Let's see if you can do something like that. Oops. Uh, it can't do it itself. It's not uh, allowed. Um, recently they prevented it. It's still good to know. They prevented it from mm -hmm. allowing it to actually access the internet. People were doing workarounds by giving it libraries to let it then do like a Google search, basically, um, and get data. Mm -hmm. And they locked that down recently. But mm -hmm. they're showing you how to do it over here. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, that's nice. Interesting. Yeah, that's, 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 that's fine. Could you um, do one more as B? Given the data above, could you combine it with your estimates of each of those countries total population and create an interesting analysis of that. I want to see if I can get it to like kind of estimate or guess and combine it with field data. Um, mm -hmm. And let's see if that works.
No, it's doing, mm. it's doing a, eh. Stop okay. generation. I'm going to ask it one more time to see if we can get it to do it differently. Can I actually edit it? Like, go okay. up, up to the light above. Oh, okay. Yeah, there you go. Um, okay. please use your best guess from your latest data as to what their population gets. Uh oh, you've hit the wall again, I believe. <laughs> there you go. Oh, okay. Is it gonna? It's like basically it always up twenty twenty. It doesn't have data for the latest in this graph, but it's saying mm -hmm. it's it's gonna use twenty twenty data and do a mm -hmm. do some math where it says looking at its growth rate from the previous cool. years, come, multiplying it by the the, the population it knows, and mm -hmm. the estimation. That would be incredible if you could do something like that. Yeah, thank. It's math right now. Oh, it did a random number. Oh. <laughs> GDP per capita, NP, random, and uh, <laughs> scroll to the right a little bit. Does it? Uh, too far. Too far. Too far. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. I'm pretty sure it's just doing a random number. <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, yeah. Do you think Chile? has larger GDP than Denmark and Canada? Probably not. So this is a good example of sort of like yeah. limitations. Maybe if I gave mm -hmm. it the actual data for these countries mm -hmm. and the populations, it would work better because you can mm -hmm. upload another data snippet and ask to do that for you. Um, but at least it's, it's trying its best. Just it is. Here. Uh, but, <laughs> but yeah, you can kind of get an idea of kind of how to use this thing. You know, just like, um, like constantly just providing your data, asking it to work between... Um, here, let's just try. Can you make me a gift of the changes of spending in GDP average over time? Some weird one. Last weird thing. Yeah. Last weird one. All right, cool. Exciting. No, it won't do for me. That's fine. Yeah. going to have you do it. Yeah. Yeah. It it uh, is interesting. It, yeah, and I've seen some really cool examples. Um, mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, you have to learn. There's a lot of ways to mm -hmm. use it. Um, I'd recommend again Ethan Mollick. Uh, in fact, this is kind of where his bread and butter is. Uh, he does this all the time. Let me just share this last tab up right now. Mm -hmm. Ethan Mollick on Twitter. And um, if you just look at like uh the kind of stuff he does, um, he just like shows like. Sentiment analysis and stuff with code interpreter and CSV data. Like um, another one he has over here is using the circle of like the Carter hype cycle information, mm -hmm. um, a technology with like data, interesting stuff. Um, mm -hmm. He and this has some really good ones over here. I think it's a great article too. Um, mm -hmm. Oh, here. Me build a recent bar chart of a VC seed investment by country for the data. The, or just the OECD as a GIF. I'll give you a CSV that will have a lot of data, just use seed investment. Make it prettier, label better, make it MP4. Nice. That's so you, cool. you can, like, 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 if you know how to talk to it, and you can like, give mm -hmm. it the right things, you can make it do like, really impressive, cool things. Mm -hmm. Get mm -hmm. lots of data, talk to it a lot, learn how to use it if you can. I think it'll be a very powerful tool. Now, mm -hmm. before we do any more, I think that's good enough. Um, ben, real quick so we can move on. What are your quick mm -hmm. thoughts about helping this tool? Yeah. Um, I mean, I think it's incredible. Uh, I think data is one of the things that's the hardest to get in a form that is usable. Um, so I do think it's, it's going to be really great for people who are sort of data scientists, not engineers. Uh, but I think people that aren't data scientists are going to kind of struggle, I think, with, yeah, like with me. parts of this. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Same. Ethan, Ethan Mollick is a data scientist. He's like, a, actually, he's a, mm -hmm. I think he's a, a professor of business at Wharton University. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. Which has a big, big overlap with data science and understanding mm -hmm. like the trends and, and data that exists from there. Yeah, 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 exactly. Uh, and I think that goes 
you know, more into, uh, uh well, a number of things, but uh, I do think that there's also, um, some place here where we're, we're kind of hitting a, a point where there's a, a challenge of workflow, I guess. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, and I, I think, I think workflows are becoming more and more important. So what parts of the workflow can you actually offset to an A? Um, this is a analysis workflow Great question. Yeah, this is an analysis is workflow, but there's a gathering workflow that's also important, right? Um, oh my God. Like you're, you're literally, you're literally getting right to my brain right now, <laughs> because what I'm thinking is that right now you can only do this inside of the chat interface, but mm -hmm. if hypothetically they allow you to do this easily through an API, mm -hmm. um, and somehow get access to that results and then data. Uh, mm -hmm. maybe it's a PDF or maybe it has like a, some document that you can download afterwards. You can create mm -hmm. entire workflows where you have one model that goes mm -hmm. around or just like regular data. Like it pulls it down from like a scraper <laughs> on the internet, a model yeah. that's structured it into the table, mm -hmm. another model that on a grok pulls from that table or pulls like a mm -hmm. his history of that, that data, maybe to the mm -hmm. spreadsheet and then uses that to do analysis that you've told it to mm -hmm. do. It's like, I need you to do analysis on financials. Let's see how that was speaking every mm -hmm. week or every day, um, mm -hmm. you know, um, with this in mind and, you know, maybe you just have a little interview to talk to it and say, Hey, can you run a, an X analysis on my data for the last like six months and mm -hmm. go in, let the data down automatically, know what data you're talking about, have it, have it run the Python code. And as is, here we go, here's a link, here's a PDF mm -hmm. that is a full breakdown of that analysis. Mm -hmm. Um, I think that's part of the workflow that'll make this usable. And it's part of the UX that'll make this actually very maybe not entirely fully viable, there's probably more steps to get it, for, to get it really there, but it'll go from mm -hmm. being this thing that's um, interesting and maybe usable by very specific people to being mm -hmm. the thing that um, with the right setup, anybody can use for their business. I would love it for a business. Let's say I was a business um, owner and mm -hmm. I had all this data I had to kind of contend with constantly. Mm -hmm. Great, and, and analytics, my... my, um, mm -hmm. uh, my Literally what I was just thinking about is yeah. like we just launched the new site uh, and I've got some analytics set up <laughs> and I've got some stuff i've got some basic stuff i've got a funnel of like you know did a user go through and contact us right based yeah. on the the data that they got um and you know that funnel sort of exists but it's you know maybe i'm missing people you know i'd love something to analyze the funnel and see hey is that like the funnel we should be tracking or is there any other like interesting you know events that are happening that i'm not aware of right or it, it, when it gets really good it'll be like hmm live it, it'll like it'll have a grok every hour or every three hours whatever it is mm -hmm. it pulls on her data it does mm -hmm. analysis on data and it just says mm -hmm. do, you tell it do creative analysis that's valuable to me my interest and this is the interest i care mm -hmm. about what i want to do and mm -hmm. let me know if anything interesting and it's like mm -hmm. is this thing interesting enough for me to tell them no. i think so here's an email then <laughs> here's a message here's yeah. a document here's an analysis that that's going to be helpful for you right now mm -hmm. i think that'll be a thing that will be like this is a lot of what we're trying to build right now. Like this is mm -hmm. what we see in those meetups that we, we go to and we discuss with mm -hmm. other people around us. It's like, how do we take these very complicated and robust and powerful tools and bend them to our will? And uh, maybe as we describe it. Uh, or, yeah. And the nice way we describe it is figure out the use of experience that makes sense to solve problems in a practical and fun and useful way to get to the, mm -hmm. the, the drag back from, um, you know, Angry Birds that, in that, plate <laughs> that feels so easy, it feels so intuitive. That it just makes right. sense to you immediately. Um, right. To to get to you know all asking him now and the scroll and refresh um, um, gestures and the and the swiping left and right to change your screens and the uh, all all mm -hmm. these things that take for granted. Um, yeah. It starts here for AI. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um. Uh. So I think we are definitely running our regular yeah. length, uh, which is I think okay. Um, let's, let's move on though. Let's, 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 let's that, move yeah. on to, to another topic though. Um, so mid journey, um, one of my favorite topics, uh, not, not too far abreast of, of kind of what we're talking about right now. Um, if we think about like artist workflows or like thinking about iterating with AI art, um, mid journey has released some pretty awesome tools that enable some new, uh, cool creativity, um, for those who, who are kind of looking for it. So, um, I will go ahead and share. Um, this is a, uh, discord server I have, I, I think I'm the only one in it. It's just me and mid journey hanging out. Um, and, uh, I actually set this up, um, in, in a way, because, uh, I like to find prompts that I think are really interesting and satisfying to look at, 
Um, for instance, I'm obsessed a little bit with uh, abstract art <laughs> uh, in some way, especially abstract art that has like sort of meaning. So, you know, some of these are like potential energized apprehensive. And, you know, so you have this this interesting, you know, fluid like motion um, that kind of emotes something, um, you know, I, I, some of these have, have been like very cool um, in the past. Um, I know that like version three, I really loved it did a lot of these sort of like very vertical kind of style um, uh, abstract art that was very interesting. Um, and some of those I think are like, I think mid journey version three is probably like still my favorite uh, for, for thinking about this, but uh, V5 has definitely come up with some like really cool stuff uh, recently. And just, that and I... just a note, people who are mm -hmm. watching along, I should have this earlier mm -hmm. for um, the chat. Oh, the chat good call. And um, mm -hmm. we're right now looking at Discord and looking at this nice channel that the Ben mm -hmm. has, um, mm -hmm. where um, we can kind of see very clearly um, different examples of abstract art that he's organized uh, in this in this like abstract art channel and the prompts that go with it. So with Venture Journey, you do Discord prompts. So you kind of just say um, some some phrase, and this one is exciting potential, energized, apprehensive, abstract, version 5.2. Um, mm -hmm. But with Mid Journey, you can also specify older versions. So you can specify version mm -hmm. three or four, or whatever it is, and kind of see mm -hmm. how the evolution of those of those versions impacts the art itself. Um, mm -hmm. Three was really interesting. I think it's supposed to get really kind of good enough to like be usable, but still often was more creative and abstract than I think um, would be useful for something like um, marketing visualizations. But yeah. great for like art, I feel like. Yeah, absolutely. Um, whereas like five, like some of these like gradients are like amazing. Like I would absolutely think about using this for uh, some marketing material, a poster, anything, right? Yeah. Um, they have like really cool capabilities now. So I'm just going to run a new one just because um, I, the reason that I have this sort of safe prompt space is so that um, I, I can kind of track things that I like. So I try not to clutter that space too much. I just have an experiments channel where I just yeah. do my regular uh, imagine mid journey stuff. Um, so I'm just doing another one for uh, interesting, curious exploratory. That's sort of like the mood um, of sort of us right now is we're sort of like mm -hmm. looking at um, AI art. Um, and and thinking about things here so um we're just waiting for this to uh complete i was um, it's, it's up to like 92 percent or 90 percent and mm -hmm. it looks like almost done 93 percent and then mm -hmm. when it's complete it looks like 10 times better i guess the ups does that <laughs> as well right yeah it's the final that final upscale step and yeah it's like yeah. boom it's like you were looking at it in like 720p and now it's like boom 4k like yeah there it is exactly <laughs> yeah exactly um this one's crazy. It looks like something like Escher style a little yeah. bit. Um, <laughs> uh, I, I kind of really like the bottom left one. It feels like almost like um, a weird, like, like alternative interdimensional bullshit world. Um, <laughs> yeah, I agree. It's 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 got some interesting like knobs and, and crannies in it. I just upscaled yeah. that, um, and now we're seeing a lot of uh, oh, it's like a, an oil paint like um texture to it too mm -hmm. oh yeah you can kind of see the light like catching the black. it yeah yeah um but now you can kind of see there's these other uh capabilities on it so they've got some varying strong subtle but now you can zoom out or pan um so one thing we could do is i could like pan left and sort of yeah. we can see do there's it. like a a ramp here we can kind of see like what's over there uh and then i'm also going to zoom out pretty far and just kind of see like hey like what's out further yeah, um, from this, those, those will be two I, separate jobs, but you can also combine those and like continue to iterate on the same one. But like, it's great to zoom side by side because we're yeah short in time anyway. So exactly, so um, I'll have those know, both running. Leah actually wants to, my partner Leah um mm -hmm. wants to actually try to um potentially do some prints. She's really interested in the idea of like ooh like making some prints of some of her favorite artwork that she's done through mm -hmm. the journey and putting them mm -hmm. on the wall. Which mm -hmm. is fascinating for a lot of reasons. I feel like it'll be challenging if, like, some of our artist friends come over and say, "Wow, this is beautiful. Who mm -hmm. did this?" Um, <laughs> I, I might lie, just say like a like a human being, because they'll be very mad if they find out it's AI. A lot of people feel <laughs> very strongly about that. Um, yeah. Or they might just know because it's me. They're like, oh, Dylan, AI, right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Of course. Of course, you have the AI on the wall. Of course. Who knows? <laughs> and it's true. Well, of course, I will. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay. 
yeah uh so so the two are done uh so first so first we've got the zoom out which um very interesting i like it, the bottom left one again uh, again yeah the bottom left one's very cool it looks there's like almost architecture yeah. sort of being built around it uh they all do a very like sort of circular look um yeah. as they zoom out which almost makes it feel like there's it's like going through a lens maybe or something yeah Maybe, maybe, um, maybe the first like um, image itself was just a kind of congruent with that for some reason. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I guess maybe it was like the the circular shape of kind of the middle of it, maybe. Yeah. Um, that kind of pulls the user, like pulls that out further. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the other one we've kind of panned over. Uh, it looks like sort of more of similar structures. I think there's only one that really has a good bit of sort of negative space. Yeah. Um, but it almost looks like a planet was here at one point. Um, very active, I will say. Yeah. I think I find the zoom out a little bit more calming. These other ones feel like very cluttered uh, and a bit <laughs> kind of scary in a way, maybe. <laughs> what you can um, do is you can also mm -hmm. just like um, take like the one of the pan ones, upscale it, and then zoom out again mm -hmm. on that one. You can, just, exactly. you can do all kinds of like interesting things in that regard. Exactly. Yeah. Um, and and it is interesting too, like once we panned over, that actually extended the aspect ratio. Um, yeah. I didn't expect that. I actually I haven't used it yet. So um, I was expecting it to actually like cut this in half and push you over to the side. No, you can uh, get but very, it, very long ones as well if you want to. And yeah. they've done like animations where they kind of just scroll across these long, these long images, which is very yeah. interesting. Yeah, very cool. Yeah, I like that a lot. I, I love the... Um, Everyone's been doing a lot of interesting stuff with Photoshop. I remember there was one that was like, they took like a bunch of different memes and like put them all in the same like frame and then made like a dinner scene with like a bunch of different meme characters and stuff. It was very, <laughs> very cool. Like you can get really creative with this stuff. Yeah, it's, it's pretty and, awesome. And that's, and that's a really, I think, um, mm -hmm. poignant point to jump off of here is that mm -hmm. um, I think some people just assume um, that you can just put in whatever word you want here and get something that makes you happy and then walk away. And to mm -hmm. some degree, I appreciate that. You know, a lot of what mm -hmm. I do, just like I'll throw a word in there, like literally one word, just see what happens. And I'll get some beautiful mm -hmm. thing. I'm like, oh, this is great. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, that's fine. That's a normal mm -hmm. um, way to kind of um, explore and, and make art um, or, mm -hmm. or make like, let's say, AI art. Um, mm -hmm. However, um, you also can go in there and really try to manipulate this in different ways. You can try to create like, um, like, like right now, like this panning. Like now, so there's, like mm -hmm. a, there's like a, is that a light shining on the painting or is that light behind um, this, everything it else? It looks like light behind at this point, but yeah. we can, we can push it up and see, <laughs> which is cool. Yeah. yeah. It, it, but like, like we started with a, with a very particular thing and now we have this like metropolis, like, um, decrepit space city with this really <laughs> weird, almost like 1970s like space vibe with all the round yeah. um, edges, but also the weird, like, like sharp pointy pillars. Um, mm -hmm. Like some, I feel like that's a ghost by, by the way, back there. <laughs> it does. It yeah. does kind of feel like a ghost in some yeah. way or like a, like just kind of like looming over just like this weird contraption. Mm -hmm. And, and Oh, <laughs> there's some crazy eyes on one of these. Oh yeah. Of, yeah. Like we'll, we'll see something wild probably. Yeah. And then like that, like it's getting smaller and smaller, but like mm -hmm. more is being added. It's just, mm -hmm. it's, you can have a lot of fun with this. Um, <laughs> and, uh, yeah, I'd recommend if you have them in journey and, and, um, or if you don't, and you're curious, give it a mm -hmm. shot. Like this is like really, it's really just fun. Think of it that way. Don't worry about right now. If you, if you're struggling with like you know, the complexity of the, um, ramifications of having tools like this in the world, I appreciate that. But I think before mm -hmm. you get into the point where you're like really kind of allowing that to control or to, to um, uh, let's say, um, direct how you want to interact with this, um, just also have an exploratory phase if you can. Just go in there, mm -hmm. no judges, nothing, and just have an idea how you can understand, just so you can understand the technology better, even to critique it, even to hate mm -hmm. it. It's better to <laughs> know the thing that you hate in some, in some ways. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I, I don't think people are going to hate this uh, if you get a chance to play with it. It's just fun. Like this yeah. is this is cool. It's like a now it's like a solarium kind of looking thing above it. Um, yeah, yeah, it's fascinating. I like it a lot. Yeah, this this one turned out too. It's like a it's got shelving or something going on up here too. Like, that ghost looks kind of sad now. Like it's kind of like, <laughs> was like left alone in this weird weird toy world. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And then you can kind of take this and then do a oh, I, oh there's no variations now. Interesting. 
variations start disappearing Going away. at yeah. some point. Yeah, interesting. Huh. Anyway, um, but yeah, so that's that's uh, that's what's new with Midjourney. Um, they keep adding new crazy stuff all the time now, uh, which is very cool. Um, I think this sort of Discord server thing helps you kind of own it a little bit more and understand sort of like what prompts you like. Um, I'm still looking forward to the day when um, yeah. there's an API, of course, because yeah. um, I'm really wanting to build some custom search and I think custom prompting, I think will kind of get to be a point where I would like to be able to say, hey, I'm looking for this. I don't quite know how to prompt for it. Could you give me a recommendation of a prompt that would get me that based on what I like? Because yeah. um, I think there is something right now. It's very like community based in terms of like what it produces. But I think there's a point that could be made for it to be a bit more like individual user based. Um, yeah. So sort of something I think, I'm thinking about there. I think we'll, we'll have some really interesting opportunities also like I did this little cool, fun mini app where I made it a book that you talk to and it like mm -hmm. navigates great sports and all kind of stuff. It's really quick experiment, but just kind of like prove this idea. And the biggest challenge is like the, um, the AI art engines that have APIs aren't very good right now. Um, it's able to, well, it wasn't when I tried that out. It's able to fusion 0.9 XL, mm. which recently released and that's open source. And that's uh, mm. something you have API for. Come into that now. Mm. It actually looks pretty good. Um, so. Another kind of like side bit of news is that if you're really more interested in something that's completely open and available to you, mm -hmm. be able to fusion XL 0.9 is coming on uh, close to mid journey level um, quality. So mm -hmm. um, as you can see, the space is, is getting better and it will keep getting better. Um, mm -hmm. And you may not, you may not want to use them as they are today, but if you mm -hmm. learn how to use them and integrate them into your workflow, um, these models are almost drop and drop out. You just say, you know mm -hmm. what, I'm going to just switch it out for a different model. Uh, mm -hmm. And eventually you'll have a model that maybe you like, or maybe one that you fine tune yourself. Um, and then you'll be able to use it the way you want to. So if you're a developer and you're I'm curious about how to kind of integrate, integrate them into the workflow, don't wait for the model to be perfect. Um, so you can make the workflow now, um, mm -hmm. and then the model will come. Awesome. Um, next up, uh, I think we're going to talk about Google DeepMind, I know, um, yeah. and then Superintelligence and all the crazy stuff going on with that. Let me, um, yeah, yeah. Uh, I can skim through this real quick, just because just we've been talking for a bit already, um, and now it's <laughs> midnight. Um, but but so, um, today just uh, a, a, a nice podcast came out with um, uh, Demis Hasidus. Demis Hasidus, I can never pronounce his name correctly. Um, He's uh, the DeepMind um, CEO, who's now like the, the lead of the combined Google Brain DeepMind um, team. He talks about that process. It's very interesting. If you're curious about like um, sort of like the um, the the process of combining two very smart, powerful research teams into one new one, and the challenges you might have, and the goals you have, he gets into that a little bit um, in this in this episode. Um, very interesting, and you know. Overall, it's a reaction. It's a reaction to the to something that's really kind of um, uh, amazing that's happening in the world today. So there's one part of that podcast that's really interesting I'll talk about. And um, the the podcast host, I forget his name, he's like this, he's, he's part of The Verge. He does all of the text journalism stuff. He's, in it. he's a nice guy to talk to. Um, anyway, um, he says something, he says something like, um, it seems like um, all the AI from three plus, four plus years ago was really oriented around, or even like recently before ChatGPT, um, oriented around uh, solving these problems that are very inhuman to solve. An uh, mm -hmm. example would be um, AlphaFold. Um, a human being isn't going to be able to do that, go in mm -hmm. and like do all the permutations of like this, this, this like protein, and it's very much a computer job. But like, computers aren't mm -hmm. smart to do so. So it's like making a smarter computer to do a job, so pretty computer job. Um, same thing with like, um, Kind of like the like the um, Alpha Go instead of Alpha Fold. Um, I don't. I took like Go decently. I learned after the whole Go, Go tournament of like two three years ago. Mm -hmm. But like I'm not a grandmaster who's been playing for 30, 40 years. Many people are. I can't ever beat the best players. It's actually, usually like twenty year old kids um, or eighteen year old kids. Kids. Those are adults. And mm -hmm. um, the um, regardless, like the I I could never be that good. So an AI that can beat them feels also kind of like a thing that makes sense for it. 
very specialized tasks that I don't really need to really, it doesn't really impact my life. I'm not, I'm not going around like challenging um, <laughs> like masters of these board games. This isn't like Pokemon, the the real Yeah, world. exactly. Right? <laughs> you don't need to collect your badges so that you can go to the, you know. <laughs> I mean, they only. Um, that'd be, that's, a, that's a dream world. Um, that is. But like instead, what's what's happening with ChatGPT was that it finally kind of entered this world. It's been kind of coming here for a while, but it everything came together in a nice UX UI or good enough UX UI, which uh, I'll talk about finally with, when we get into um, Pi. Um, and it allowed for people, everybody, to use these tools in a way that is general enough to hit us a wide variety of personal use cases that matter to me as a person and things that I do or can't do or want to do in my life. Yeah. I code. Help me write some code. I want to write an email. Cool. Help me write an email. Um, I want to talk about my feelings and my emotions. Cool. I can do it. Um, I want to um, solve like this challenging riddle I have. Oh, who knows? All these things that are normal things that we do all the time, it can mm -hmm. now kind of integrate that process and be a part of um, your tool belt and a mm -hmm. very, very powerful. It's like the, mm -hmm. it's like the tricorder or the phaser from Star Trek. It does like eight different things, right? Mm -hmm. it, it becomes this like cornerstone of how they navigate the world. And it feels mm -hmm. like this is what this becomes to some degree. Mm -hmm. um, I've added some liberties to what he said, but kind of that's the, that's the idea of, I think, what the difference is here. And I think mm -hmm. what, you know, the miss was saying was that like this took him for surprise that everyone was surprised at how much I'd be an mm -hmm. impactful thing. Um, mm -hmm. And it, in, in retrospect, it seems obvious. Of course, the difference between like, you know, he, he does make a good point. Like the, the alcohol is amazing in terms of like what it does. And like basically like a million biologists have used this thing now. It's used all, all over the world. And like mm -hmm. almost every paper has to do with like protein stuff now. It's just a huge prolific tool that's changed the makeup mm -hmm. of this industry. So it's a big mm -hmm. deal, but I'm not a biologist. I don't control <laughs> proteins. Um, I'm vaguely aware of it on the side, only mostly because of my interest in AI. Um, mm -hmm. And like the, the use case for the average show isn't there. Um, and I think what he's saying is that he realizes that that is an integral part of the process of learning how to make these systems that are useful for the entire world. And now increasingly is possible when it wasn't maybe a few years ago, especially the world of Transformer. Um, mm -hmm. So... Fascinating session there. Mm -hmm. And that goes into the next part, which is the super intelligence thing. So um, um, recently, we might have, you might have heard that um, OpenAI has this new kind of like super intelligence crack team to kind of uh, save the day where they basically want to solve alignment for something that would be smarter than human beings. It's the common um, sort of like uh, as a doomsday AI, yeah, exactly. like prediction of AI. Exactly. Yeah. That. AI safety specialists always talk about like, um, we, how do you control something that's smarter than you? How do you control mm -hmm. something that it can do things a hundred times faster than you? How do you, how do you navigate that kind of dynamic? Um, mm -hmm. Which is fair. It's a very fair question. I don't know how to do that. Um, mm -hmm. And I think that people would want to have like a significant amount of certainty that they successfully be able to do that before they would engage with AI that were that good. Um, and a lot of discussions are kind of saying increasingly, like, you know, I've been, like I said, I've been talking to Ben about this for years and I've been into this, in this world for years. And I have noticed that like, if you talk about like the idea of a super intelligence, a model that's mm -hmm. smarter than all of us, five years ago, even, mm -hmm. you'd be like, you're high, um, <laughs> or you write all sci-fi. Mm -hmm. um, now, you still get that in bits, but it went from like being 85% of the replies to like mm -hmm. the minority, I think, quarter mm -hmm. of the replies. Uh, I think people mm -hmm. are now thinking, I don't have, uh, who knows? <laughs> I, don't, I have no idea what's going to happen mm -hmm. in five years or 10 years. I have no idea mm -hmm. if we're going to be, there's a wall that's blocking us from making a model that's super intelligent. Um, mm -hmm. So maybe we should care about this. Maybe we shouldn't think about this more. And this is mm -hmm. becoming a thing that governance is talking about, the UN is talking mm -hmm. about, um, this international, um, I think, work being kind of had to kind of consider mm -hmm. and consolidate our feelings and thoughts on this. Uh, mm -hmm. All relevant, all useful stuff. Um, and this is relevant for even before we go to super intelligence. But, you know, the, the models today already are coming to this point where you can do things that are very, um, uh, challenging for how we navigate society already, or how, or how we use mm -hmm. society being. And mm -hmm. who knows what we'll have as we make better, stronger models that are eventually mm -hmm. smarter than us. Even if you don't mm -hmm. think about like what to, you know, like destroy us and like cut the world in half or who knows what. Um, mm -hmm. They could just be like, we don't like you and we're going to ignore you. We're going to go over here. Mm -hmm. Goodbye. Peace. Who knows? Um, mm -hmm. They could, we, there's like, there's no way to predict what could happen in this situation. 
And it mm-hmm. could be, maybe the maybe most likely case is that they're like, hey, you guys are great. My job is to help you out. I'll help you out. Let's do it. Mm-hmm. That's the that's what everyone wants. Um, they have to help us like solve medical problems. They can help us solve material science problems. They can help us mm-hmm. um, and to keep it being entertained. And that's mm-hmm. a scary one, but they can write us books. They can make us movies. Who knows what they'll do for in the future? Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, that's what we want to happen. Um, and how do we get there? It's a question. Right? Did you read that article about super intelligence? I haven't read the article about super intelligence. I've only heard what you've told me. So <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm going into it a little bit blind. Uh, but I, I think one thing I think is interesting about these arguments. Um, I, I would say that I am kind of in the more pragmatic and somewhat more optimistic camp um, just because of my positioning. I think that there is sort of like a eventual crazy future where something like sentience or something like that could happen. I mean, we are sort of like remodeling the the human brain and, and sort of trying to instill some semblance of ourselves on our creation, which I think is what all creators have somewhat tried to do <laughs> from sculpture to storytelling to, uh, you know, everything. <laughs> Even with something as nerdy as AI, we try to be so poetic. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, the, the thing that maybe worries me more is sort of the idea of, um, like the the Wall Street bets end of this, I guess, where you've got somebody who um, sees an idea for how to use AI and decides to hook it up to their bank account and hook it up to stock market or hook it up to mm. um, you know some quick get rich fast sort of scheme, um, and then lets the AI like some AI program, not an AI that is sort of like has an intent, but an AI that sort of like baby AGI like, like or code interpreter. Code who interpreter. Knows? Yeah. yeah. Who knows? Yes. Yeah. And, and it's sort of like, they're like, hey, cool. Here's my API. Here's my interface. Like, go make me money. And they lose everything. And not only do they lose everything, but they're in debt. And suddenly they like have like negative money. Right. Would it be, would it um, be worse if they lost everything or if it worked incredibly well? Which is the worst case? <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. Uh, yeah. I mean, both, both have pretty, pretty strong negatives. Um, I mean, I think if, if they made a ton of money, very quickly uh usually uh um I-, I love this saying it's like uh usually any unexpected performance benefit is a bug uh because <laughs> usually you, f- you forgot something or you did something um I-, I remember there was this uh really interesting like well interesting and sad u.s case where uh this guy who was looking at his like uh, uh bank account information realized that if he changed the number at in his browser um, he, there was like sort of like you know accounts slash number, this and if you increment like the elements tab in the like, developer tools, change the value. Yeah, no, I mean no, I mean on the URL, like in the <laughs> URL, there was a number there, and if he changed the value, he would get a different person's account, and so it was like you up, <laughs> you opt under your account, and that's a yeah. skeleton key off. What's your yeah account? yeah you're in you're just <laughs> in yeah yeah it's the skeleton key off yeah and so it's so, a this was i think one of the major banks this guy found this exploit he was like hey this is crazy why do you guys basically give access to every account in the system and they threw him in prison because they were like you hacked a million accounts and and it's sort of like okay well that's not the case but it does it does sort of shine a light on the way that we sort of think about security to some degree there is uh there's a challenge there where we sort of does that believe count as security through obscurity? Because it's yes. not obscure. That's it's not obscure. obscure. <laughs> that's just that's just negligence. But <laughs> but I think there is sort of like the obscurity security through obscurity as well, which I think AI is is extremely well set up to exploit. exploit? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I think I think the thing that makes it, that I worry about, I think, in the short term, is how much more expensive it is going to be to build banking applications or build um, critical infrastructure. And, you know, there's already not a lot of money going toward those efforts already. And this is going to make it, one, a lot harder to build those things, and two, a lot riskier. Yeah, you don't have um, the talent even to go around for every company to build, to have to give them a security specialist. Mm-hmm. Um, we're already kind of, like, we're, we're struggling to find people with the ability and knowledge to do that. Um, mm-hmm. For large organizations, mm-hmm. uh, not for every single organization. Maybe 
in the end, you have an AI model does it. That's kind Maybe. of what the, the goal is for super intelligence stuff is that they want to make mm -hmm. models that can basically help them, um, I don't know, stay on top of models that are smart by like mm -hmm. testing them out, um, mm -hmm. red teaming it, they call it, where basically they, mm -hmm. um, they try to find whether or not this thing's going to be bad and people like are mm -hmm. producing bad and like, and how to do so, um, mm -hmm. be able to parse and understand those, those, those tools. So I think to some degree, we might have that experience across the board. My, everyone might have like a language model or work two or three or four that's mm -hmm. that's security tied mm -hmm. to gathering analytics and data and feedback. And for the, mm -hmm. your precious data, that's a community internal one. Maybe this one that's like not tied to the internet. You know, there's, mm -hmm. many, there's many entire ecosystems and architectures that are be built around um, integrating these into our, our tool sets. Everything from being mm -hmm. an active part of uh, providing us information and useful data and new experiences. Mm -hmm to being mm -hmm. a defensive part of protecting us mm -hmm. from other LLMs and other tools mm -hmm. that are out there to get us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. And it's, it's going to be a very interesting space. Um, so I, yeah, I think the super intelligence, it, it's just, uh, I'm excited about the thought, the thinking about it. I think there's a lot of really exciting space there. Uh, the day to day, I think is the thing that I end up like, I'm like, Ooh, okay. So if we end up there, where do we end up tomorrow? And I think that's yeah. where I, I'm, I think I'm interested. That's where success comes from too. You can't think about, especially in the world we live in, live in today with um, the way things are increasingly, I think, hard to predict. You know, mm -hmm. we don't have the same, like a good example of the way is that if you train for a job in like 1950 by going to university and learning how to like you know, do accounting or finance analysis, odds are um, that job would be roughly the same for mm -hmm. one or two decades. 70s mm -hmm. or 80s if you go into um a, any kind of like um i don't know degree right now um mm -hmm. i think almost any subject <laughs> do you think it'll be the same in 10 years um no um no, probably not so it's so hard to predict out and, and to plan out for this so don't try to plan out too far ahead plan out for tomorrow um mm -hmm. think about what's new next little while and how to how to, mm -hmm. how to line around that let and, and i think you, that's yeah. That's actually part of the mentality why we can keep doing this, I will yeah. say. Because there isn't a mental toll uh, or an emotional toll that you have thinking about AI. Oh, yeah. Just generally. Like, I have a huge one where it's like, I constantly feel like I'm in FOMO. But I have to kind of continually tell myself that there's a long future ahead. We don't really know what's going to happen. And, you know, the first mover advantage isn't necessarily there. I, I mean, like, we're still kind of in the first mover space, I feel like. Yeah. We're like, everyone is, is, is throwing everything on the wall, seeing what sticks. That's the yeah. entire space we're in right now. Yeah. So, and, but, and I don't think I, there's any solution that's like, we got it. It's done. Everyone else go home. <laughs> you know? uh, and I think a great example of that is this amazing... AI bot. I don't know. How, how did you find this? Uh, you, okay. said you sent me pie over the weekend. Okay. You said you gave me no explanation. You were just like, download this immediately. Try it. You have to see this app. And I downloaded it and proceeded to not message you back for about eight hours while I <laughs> played with it. So, <laughs> okay. Um, let me share the website um, so we can see it real quick. Mm -hmm. um, and let's, let's. Oh, I've never seen their website. I've only seen the app. So, yeah, I'm excited. it's a pretty good website. Let's just share. Yeah. Here. Share. And oh, so it's the same thing. Okay. UI, Great. right? Um, and you can even, I think, hook it into like, I, I think I saw like in the corner. Well, maybe it's not there anymore. Um, mm. or we have to sign it for it. But you, you could get the, a, a voice for it here. What's so, in the bottom left corner? Because there is like a, just like oh. help you with things. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. That's cool. That yeah. doesn't exist on the mobile version. So yeah. Let's go back That's interesting. Here. I think I saw when I started off like the little thing in the corner. No, nope, not anymore. Okay, that was crazy. Um, the thing is now they have an, an iOS app, not Android yet, but Android is coming. Um, and with the iOS app, uh, they built in voice communication where you can talk to it and you, it also speaks to you. Now, this is what I'm, this is why I think it's so powerful as a UX experience because I played with Pi a couple, like a month and a bit ago. Um, I, I, I believe Pi because of the people who like um, make Pi. Um, let's see if there's a fun belt. Uh, who is it? Hey, Pi. 
property. Inflection AI. There we go. Hmm. So Inflection AI is a company that is um, like one of the one of the um, the reason why I know about them is number one, they they raised a, like a billion dollars or their valuation is a billion dollars now. Um, and number two, um, the CTO or the CEO used to work at DeepMind. He was, um, I think, a childhood friend of uh, Demis and Sibis. That's how I know about him. So, um, mm -hmm. um, uh, he believed, I think he had notoriously strict, let's say, business management practices that clashed with the culture in DeepMind after a couple of, nothing too dramatic, but like unfortunate, like encounters. Um, but now he's doing his own thing and this is part of it. And they're trying to make basically the personal, like her like bot. That's their goal. That's, I think they're going to use that term. Um, oh, wow. her and it, it's getting so close to her. It's so incredibly close. Um, I, I can't show it off now. Um, we'll look at videos online if we want, be curious about this. Um, mm -hmm. it is, it is absolutely, if you have an iPad or an iPhone, absolutely stellar. It's free. Mm -hmm. You just literally press the little, the bottom right corner, the little, um, phone button and start talking mm -hmm. to it. And it will respond to you quite well. It's still not perfect. Like it isn't no, like if you pause in the wrong way, it'll think you're done talking and it'll just, it'll go next, but it's still mm -hmm. really good. And, um, it feels like one of the most natural um, AIs I've ever, models I've ever seen. And mm -hmm. I have, I have feelings for why it feels so different. I have, I have thoughts and feelings. Mm -hmm. Before I get mm -hmm. to them, I want to hear your thoughts and feelings about what your experience was like, number one. And number right. two, why do you think this feels so different than models that have tried to do this and like tools that have tried to do this in the past? Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, so I started using it, um, right when you, when you shared it with me, um, and I was actually really anxious about something. <laughs> I was going through something with my job and, and, and sort of thinking through, um, you know, some big changes that I'm actually making in my life. Um, and, uh, so it immediately is like, Hey, how are you doing? And I'm like, Oh, and I just like kind of poured everything at it. Um, and it, it kind of like walked me through it a bit. It didn't, it didn't tell me anything I didn't already know or didn't want to do, but it, it just kind of kind of kept incrementally asking, supporting me, uh, iterating on sort of like what I could do, what I have I thought about. Um, it asked me, like, had I thought about doing certain other things? It didn't push me. It wasn't like trying to push advice on me. It was sort of passively to some degrees um, giving me suggestions, but also supporting me and reaffirming choices that I'd made that were uh, it sort of perceived as like positive um and i think it mostly correctly did i don't uh there there were some times uh later where it, it wasn't working but uh yeah okay i'll just talk about those because I, I think mostly it, it kind of gave me a way to i felt a lot more calm after having gone through it um and I actually felt more prepared <laughs> because it kind of asked it, it, it had me like write some things down and then i'm like oh yeah actually that was that is good. I should, I should, you know, I kind of felt a bit more, a bit more prepared going into the, the conversations I was having. Um, but uh, one thing that it did later that I think was interesting was it started uh, to not believe me <laughs> at certain times. So uh, uh, my girlfriend, Ellen, uh, uh, she's Korean. And so I'm kind of learning Kore like different Korean words. Um, and so we kind of talked to it in like English and Korean and sometimes didn't quite pick up the Korean word. And so it was like, oh, you're messing with me. That's not a, that's not a Korean word. Um, and once it got into that like line of thinking that I'm like playing with it, then I would be like, oh, like my girlfriend's Korean. And it's like, that's not a real person. <laughs> you mean your imaginary girlfriend? That's such a funny joke. You your really had me going. I bet you she lives in Canada. <laughs> Like, I haven't been Canada. Like, fuck you. Yeah, anyway. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, uh, yeah, anyway, I thought that was that was pretty great. Uh, that's a fun story. I like that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, uh, so, you know, pros and cons, but I, I overall really enjoyed the experience. Yeah, I think I think there's a couple things about this thing that I've really kind of come to um, realize. Number one, they've trained mm -hmm. it to um, almost always... Um, in my little bit of improv, uh, I appreciate this kind of concept conceptually, not very strictly, but conceptually, yes and you. Mm -hmm. Like, communicate what you're saying, repeat it in some way, like, oh, that must make you feel this way. This is interesting. It's a very empathetic focus. Mm -hmm. Oh, I can appreciate that. And that's a really interesting journey. That's really thoughtful. Mm -hmm. what, a, mm -hmm. what, a, what a curious thing. I really like that. That's, a, that's really good for you. Um, mm -hmm. And that really saw that happen to you. How does that make you feel? Why would, mm -hmm. what, what do you think you want to do next? Um, 
what's what's on your mind in your position? Would you think that this is to do? Like, you know, constantly just kind of like prompting you with a question afterwards. So like the the yes part is an affirmation and mm -hmm. an emotional connection a lot of the time. And the mm -hmm. and part is like a question that help continue that process, help you go into the next step, but kind of guiding you to some degree. And the way they try mm -hmm. to guide you and the way this model person guide you is almost, I feel like a very, very, very nice friend who thinks of them kind of like your own personal psychologist, but they're still mostly just a friend who's not trained to do so. And mm. very weird intersection with those two things we're talking mm. about, Ben. Mm -hmm. Hard to explain. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it does fill in that. It fills in that void where it's like somebody who's like close to you, who cares about you, who says all the right things, but definitely like once once things get to a certain level, it kind of like mellows. It it doesn't like engage uh at, at that level so like say you were like feeling really anxious and you um you, you had like specific things that you were like really uh, captivated by it may try and like flatten rather than like focus whereas like a psychologist would maybe like ask you more questions about that experience and like yeah. try and get to the bottom of it it may be like well, you know, have you thought about how, you know, this actually may feel to the other person or, you know, it, it, it may not focus that way. Yeah. It, you know? it doesn't, it doesn't really have the intent of digging in um, deeper on the interesting things that you're saying that I think are like probably pressing to you. Because it mm -hmm. doesn't really have the best, it can't, it doesn't have like an idea of like your emotional reflection. I don't think it's part of it. Mm -hmm. Like it, 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 I think it just converts your, your text to your, to your audience to text. And just mm -hmm. read it like it would anyway. You can pull something mm -hmm. from that, but like I think a human being is still going to be much better. Be like, oh, I heard it hits your voice. You said that one thing. Um, they want to say that loud, but say, tell me mm -hmm. more about it. I'm really interested mm -hmm. in this. How does it make you feel? And yeah. um, you know, and and there's other things too that are going to be missing from a real human being who's a psychologist, especially. Um, mm -hmm. That being said, um, it's free, and it's yeah. quite powerful. It's quite interesting. Mm -hmm. Please give it a mm -hmm. shot. Now, my one last thought about this is that, and this is tied to a lot of what I said before about like UX and user experience and the iPhone and like gestures. Mm -hmm. um, performance is a big part too. I think performance is a big, big part of end usability. The, in terms of the iPhone, having a uh, thing that was actually back enough to give you real time drag that didn't, that didn't, that didn't like delay behind your finger, huge mm -hmm. deal. Having a passive touch screen that actually gave you a better experience. You had to push to get that like input. Do you remember those screens that like, you have to kind of push a bit? Oh uh, yeah. Like, oh my God, I hate it. Um, <laughs> this, this was the capacitor. It was like your- It's like a, uh, the airplane. Uh, when you're in the airplane and there's a thing yeah. on the back of the seat and you have to push the buttons and like you have to like slam your fingers sometimes and you know you're like damaging the screen, but like a million other people have already done it and you, you're just like the last guy to do it. Yeah. And you're like, ah, oh, sorry. Like- <laughs> That's that's all screens were before, and touchscreens were not very good yeah. to use. And so, like this mm -hmm. slight but integral change um, mm -hmm. completely gives you a different experience. In that mm -hmm. same vein, I think the big thing I did here with number one, the personality is a, is a good part of it. It's a deal for this, mm -hmm. this kind of space. But number one, they made it so that your voice transcribed to text, and they the model read it and then replied fast enough for it to feel like a conversation. Mm -hmm. If you delay a little bit too long, it feels uncomfortable and stint, and like, mm -hmm. like stinted and like, like awkward. Um, mm -hmm. This had a bit of delay still, but like mm -hmm. uh, 1.5, two seconds. It wasn't un unfortunate whenever it cut me off. Yes. <laughs> I will say, yeah. <laughs> that part's the worst part. When it's like Where you're trying to you're explain talking. something. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you think you're done talking and you're like trying to explain something and then you do a long pause. So then it's just like, okay, well, that's what we thought. You know, so just like, yeah. Oh. yeah. I think, I think <laughs> if they, they can give it like a D bounce, um, yeah. uh, where like, or like a timer or something like that, it was like, okay, mm -hmm. well, it's five for a while. I think mm -hmm. they are ready. I'm going to slowly start talking. Oh, they talked again. Let me pause mm -hmm. my thought. We need a summary of the background of what's going on. Mm -hmm. So I can kind of come back to it whatever, whatever about later on. It's, okay, cool. Mm -hmm. And then from there, it's like, we've even asked you, um, okay, add some thoughts. Can I, can I, can I add them? I was like, yeah, mm -hmm. please, please go. Or say, no, I have a few more. Like when it, if it can do that, that's also, mm -hmm. also a UX thing. Seriously. Mm -hmm. This is also something you can develop in the program. You can give it to that like cold functionality, that like core ideology of how to interact with you. Mm -hmm. um, can significantly impact that ability for it to critique you about better you. Imagine mm -hmm. if it didn't interrupt you, or if it did interrupt you, you're like a human being. A mm -hmm. polite one, where things mm -hmm. are done, it says, 
Oh, so oh, sorry. Continue. Yeah. Okay, so that would be my amazing, thoughts, right? Mm -hmm. If they can do that, and if that can, and I, I don't, I don't think it's a significant technical challenge. I think it just requires the actual engineering. Um, mm -hmm. that, that is another huge jump in its ability to be a natural conversation. So mm -hmm. I think I think this is a, like if you're curious about how to give a good user experience, how to turn like like AI modeling systems and tools into something that people actually want to use, really use this tool and think about how it already is better than a lot of alternatives and things that are similar mm -hmm. to it and how it could be better. What are the things that are missing? Getting that mindset, I think, will get you to the point in which you can really think about how to close these gaps that give you those really stellar experiences. I think that's how they mm -hmm. think about it in Apple. I think Apple's really kind of like well-known for that. That's the mm -hmm. core ideology and design. And this is, I think, mm -hmm. the, same, the same idea. Yeah, absolutely. Well, um, it is 12.30, our time. Uh, we've been going for oh, quite a bit over 40 minutes, but hey, yeah. you know, uh, that is what we do here on the Civil Discussion. <laughs> that just happens. <laughs> um, we've got a pretty good list of stuff in the show notes. Uh, if there's something that we talked about that you're excited about, you'll find stuff there. Um, check out the new site. Um, we just launched it. We're excited about it. Excited to hear what you think. Um, and so you can find us at stablediscussion.com. Um, and we will, uh, be back when, uh, Dell is back from California. So, um, yeah, we'll be, and I'll be in Idaho actually at some point after that. So, oh, cool. We'll figure, figure out. Yeah. Um, end of the month. So we'll, we'll find some time hopefully before or yeah, probably before, uh, I don't, I won't have a cool mic set up there. So probably just, yeah, yeah. let's we'll give it a shot before you go. Take a break. Yeah. Awesome. Great. Thanks so much. And, uh, everyone have a pleasant rest of your evening. If it's evening, otherwise, close the rest of whatever time it is. <laughs> all right. Have a good one. Bye, all.